We're here to celebrate one of the American Journal of Epidemiology's top most influential papers in its 100 years. Today, we're going to discuss the birth weight paradox uncovered by Sonia Hernandez Diaz, Enrique Schusterman, and Miguel Carman. On behalf of the authorship team, Dr. Sonia Hernandez Diaz is with us today. She's professor of epidemiology and director of pharmacoepidemiology at Harvard T.H. Gann School of Public Health. Congratulations, Dr. Hernandez Diaz. Thank you, Lori. Thank you for having me. Well, your paper came out in 2006, and this paper outlines that there's a paradox. Among low birth weight infants, maternal smoking had been associated with lower infant mortality, leading people to falsely believe that maternal smoking was beneficial for low birth weight babies. So tell me the story of how this paper came about. What was really driving the story around this paradox? Yeah, good question, Lori. I think how I see it is uh, for this paper to happen, um, there were two ideas colliding. On one hand, as you were describing, um, the birth rate paradox had been raised and discussed by Alan Wilcox, Irva Herpichotto, and others reproductive epidemiologists. And at the same time, uh, we had Sander Greenland, Bird, Jamie Robbins, developing the causal diagrams for epidemiologic research. And Cole and, and Hernan had demonstrated um, how DACs can be used to show that a standard adjustment, certification, or regress, regression um, for variables that are affected by exposure may introduce a bias. So we argued that that was the case with the, with the paradox. And in discussions with uh, my colleagues, Enrique Sisterman and Miguel Hernan, we look at the paradox with just a different pair of glasses, the dark glasses that Jamie Robbins had given us. So uh, in terms of who was uh, playing a role, I think it was epidemiologists uh, uh, stratifying for things without maybe thinking first why to stratify. What was your favorite part of developing this paper? Was it the DAGs? I mean, you talk about them so uh, in, in such an enlightened way, or what else do you think made it so successful? So my favorite part was probably thinking deep about this topic and discussing it with my co-authors Enrique and Miguel. And I, I think epidemiologists enjoy this brain workouts and you see that all the time at the CR, at the socials, at dinners with all, other peers. What made it successful? I think that first, we were building up on the work of investigators such as Alan Wilcox. Second, the issue was a real um, problem. It was not just a solution looking for a problem. There was a problem in, in, in the field. And third, uh, we did um, marinate the idea and the manuscript. And um, Miguel Hernan has this ability to transform complex and confusing issues into simple, apparently commonsensical concepts. So I think these three things probably helped uh, for the paper to be successful. And I'm so glad that you uh, selected it for, for uh, the centennial. I, I was really honored. What were your expectations for how this paper would be influencing the field of epi? Actually, this paper is often used to um, as a reference for collider bias, which is a selection bias that can happen when, when we adjust for variables affected by exposure. The paper um, it would be influential actually for the very first step in research. So what is your question? Um, to emphasize that clarifying what is your question um, before deciding to adjust for, for a variable is really important because just because you can adjust for something, just because you have information, um, you may not need or you may not want to adjust for it. How do you apply this study to the real world that you see in front of you now? Yeah, I think we keep seeing these paradoxes everywhere that you do not have to go far to find examples. Like still today, people ask, us about adjustment for gestational age at birth for prematurity to study uh, prenatal exposures. And in other fields, uh, as you were suggesting, I'm sure there are examples like a publication in CHEST uh, yes, this last June uh, concluded that among those hospitalized, obesity does not increase the risk of pneumonia. So you're stratifying by hospitalization. And with COVID recently, um, in so many studies and reports, we were stratifying or restricting to those with a test or to those hospitalized. 
So same structure. I think epidemiologists should be able to identify the causal structures and the designs or analysis that can introduce bias um, and be careful about it and, and keep explaining it. And, and now I hope that my paper will also be a good reference for somebody getting the prize 100 years from, from now. Thank you so much, Dr. Hernandez-Diaz.